You need a budget. You know it, I know it, but what are you gonna do about it? How about we create one together right now using Google Sheets in the next 15 minutes? All right, let me show you how. Hey, what's going on everybody? Jacob Wade here from Roadmap Money, and I wanted to just walk through a really simple way to create a budget using Google Sheets. So Google Sheets, if you don't know, is a free app, and I'll pull it up here. You can log in with just like your Gmail account, and so you just go to docs.google.com slash spreadsheets. But if you go to Google Sheets, you can create a bunch of templates. I've got all these templates created, but if you just create a brand new spreadsheet, I'm gonna walk through how to organize your budget, how to think about the different sections of your budget, and then how to use it to help manage your money better. So I hope this is helpful, but let's just walk through it. So first things first, in any good budget, you're gonna start at the top with your income. So we'll put the income at the top here, and that includes not just your regular paychecks, but any other money that comes in, right? So let's say you're married and you both work and you both get a paycheck twice a month, right? Every other week, you get paid bi-weekly. So we would put your paycheck here and then her paycheck here, right? And then we would do paycheck number one for each. And if we just copy and paste this down, paycheck number two. So those are your main paychecks and we'll just make sure that we put the totals in here. So let's say 2,500 bucks a paycheck each. And then let's say you have a side hustle. Maybe you do photography or you sell something on Etsy. Whatever that is, let's say you make an extra 500 bucks a month on the side. What we're doing here is we're just trying to anticipate what is the income that's gonna be coming up for the month because that's what we need to allocate through the rest of the budget. So thinking about all of those details and putting those in, you can create that. And then let's just total the income here. So to total your income, there's a small formula. I'll show you how to do it. Basically you hit the equals sign and equals, and look, it already is telling me automatically. It knows the formula that I want to do. Google Sheets is pretty smart like that, but you can create whatever type of formula you want. You can do multiplication. You can do like average, right? The average of a bunch of numbers. We're gonna sum them up, right? And again, Google Sheets is showing you, but if we were gonna type this in, we would do equals sum, put a little open parentheses here, and then just highlight the cells that you want it to add together, and then close the parentheses and hit enter. Boom. So now we have total income. I like to put some of the headings here in bold, so you can do that to organize it a little better. And I like to actually highlight things. So income is green, got that green coming in. So now that you've got your income, we need to allocate it. And every good budget just has three sections. You've got your fixed expenses, your bills. You've got your variable expenses, like your daily spending, right? Groceries, gas, shopping, things like that. And then you have what are called savings buckets. We'll get to those at the end, so make sure you stay to the end to go through that. So let's just talk about your bills. Bills are obviously everything that goes through automatically, things like your mortgage, your car payments, maybe credit card minimum payments if you have credit card debt, subscription services, if you have lawn care as a regular expense, whatever those things are that are gonna not really change month to month, right, utilities, all of those things, you're gonna put those down here. So let's say your mortgage and your water bill and your, let's say you have like gas for heating, like natural gas, heating, you've got your garbage collection, you got electric, right, cell phone, subscriptions, and you can break these out if you want or you can put them all in one. Okay, maybe you've got car payment, you've got a credit card payment, right? Any of your regular debt payments, student loans, right? All of those things. And if you double click in between like B and C here, for example, you see how it's got that little line? It'll automatically resize. So if you're spilling over into the other cell, you can uh, hit a button there. Uh, let's say car insurance, right? So just go through and figure out what all of your bills are, and then you're gonna plug the numbers in. So let's say your mortgage is two grand a month, your water bill is about 150, your heating bill is about 100, say so garbage is, I don't know, 50 bucks, and electric's 150, your cell phone's 150, your subscriptions are about 100 a month, right? Car payments are you know 350 a month, I don't know what it is. Uh, actually, nowadays car payments are a lot higher, let's be real, real. Maybe your credit card minimum is 100 and your student loans are 400 bucks a month and let's say car insurance is about 150 a month, right? So these are just examples. So now that you've got all your bills put in, you'll notice all these numbers are just numbers. I like to highlight the cell that's gonna have all the numbers in it and just hit this little dollar sign here. Boom, now you've turned them into actual numbers. Now, I don't super care about the dollars and cents, so if you hit this little arrow here, it'll decrease it. So now you can just see the whole numbers. Makes it a little easier to read. 
So now that you've got your bills in place, let's do your, I, call, I like to call it daily spending, right? These are the expenses that you make the choice day to day to swipe the card, to make the online purchase, whatever that is. So these are things like groceries, and gas and shopping. You've got, let's be real, Amazon, right? That's probably a big one. There's a ton of other stuff here, but just whatever your regular stuff that you regularly spend on, that's not a bill, right? Maybe you've got date night, I recommend it. Maybe you've got a clothing budget, right? So whatever your daily spending categories are, put those in there and then let's total those up. So let's say you buy organic and you spend a ton on groceries. Let's say you drive a good amount and you spend some money on that and I'll just, put in some numbers here and you can put in things like car maintenance if you want in here if you have regular car maintenance maybe there's health and wellness right might be one maybe you get supplements again whatever you have put it in here and these are your regular daily spending categories now when you're using your budget this is really important these are the categories you can control the most so you should organize your bills and try to negotiate these down as low as possible but then this is your day-to-day -day choices right these are where you can actually control your spending. All right, and the last section in your budget is really simple. It's just called savings buckets. And savings buckets are monthly small savings that you put away toward a larger non-regular expense. Something that maybe is coming up in the future that you wanna save a small amount monthly toward. So Christmas is the big one, right? That happens every single year. And that is something you can save a small amount per month toward that larger expense at the end of the year. But you've also got things like birthdays, right? Events, you know, whether that's weddings or trips or whatever. Speaking of trips, vacation is a good one, you know, and then maybe even things like car repairs. You can sort of put together this savings account that allows you to save up for, you know, when infrequent car repairs come up, you have the money set aside. So whatever those are, savings buckets are a great way to make sure you have the money when you need it and not panic when something happens. Maybe a big one would be phone replacements, right? If you love to get that new iPhone every year, let's save up for it. Let's put that money away. This is a basic budget. Let's put the, uh, the numbers in and then let's talk about how to use this all together. So let's say you wanna go on a, a nice vacation every year and you're putting money aside for each of these things. So you can see they've got the dollar signs next to them now. So what I like to do at the bottom here is total up everything just like I did before. And so if I hit the equals symbol, see now the formula doesn't quite get me where I wanna go. So I'm gonna go equals sum and put the little open parentheses here. And I'm just gonna drag from the top, right? All of the expenses here. And don't worry, those blanks aren't gonna add anything. So hit enter. Now we've got our total expenses. And then what I wanna do is turn expenses red because that's money going out, bad. All right, so now we've got your total expenses and we've got your total income. It's cool to see that you know on this income, this example, you've got 10,500 in income and 7,300 bucks in expenses. So that's, that's being in pretty good shape. But I like to total this stuff at the top so that it's easier to see. So I like to put total income here and total expenses here. So then you could put total monthly savings. If you ever need to add a cell, you can just click on it right here and hit insert a row. So I just right clicked on the number four, inserted a row, just so to space these out a little bit better. So now you've got total income. The way that I bring this up is I literally just hit the equal sign and go to, down to this total income number and click the button, done. Same thing with total expenses, I hit equals, I go all the way down here and hit enter. So now we have our total income and our total expenses. And again, I like to color code these things. So you got total income, total expenses at the top, and we wanna see the difference between those two. So the way that you do that is literally just equals income and then hit the minus symbol and then click on expenses, right? C1 minus C2 is gonna give you your total savings. And then I like to make this a little bit bigger so it highlights what I've got going on for the month. So if I have 10,500 income and 7,300 bucks in regular monthly expenses, including those savings buckets, I can save $3,200 a month. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do with that monthly savings is first establish an emergency fund and then you can start investing, like say your 401k or a Roth IRA, and then you can talk about paying off high interest debt, right? There's an entire process and path you can go through, but first things first is just establish an emergency fund. And the way that you figure out what your emergency fund should be, I recommend have at least one month of expenses set aside before you go after high interest debt or investing. So you would just say, I need to save up 7,300 bucks into my savings account. So the cool thing is you could just go over here and just call this emergency fund. And let's say you wanna save a larger one, right? Let's say 
you want to save three months worth of expenses. So the goal would be, right, let's just call this emergency fund goal, and then how long, right? So your emergency fund goal is three times this monthly expense number. That would be three months of expenses. Again, I recommend at least one month to start, but if you want to do three, let's just do that for this example. So you do this, I had put the equal symbol, I clicked on C2 and then I hit the little, if you hit shift and then above the number eight, the little multiplication symbol, that asterisk, and then we're gonna do times three months. So that's how much you need to fund your emergency fund is $21,900. Well, how long will it take to get there? Here's how you're gonna do that. You're gonna go equals the total goal divided by how much you can save per month, boom. And again, that number is way too long, so let's just reduce that. So it's gonna take you about seven months to save up your emergency fund based on this budget. So I hope that was helpful in how to put together a simple budget and you can see, you know, getting that first goal of setting some money aside. If you can increase your income or decrease your expenses, you can save more per month month. So I do have a more advanced budget template that I wanted to show you and I can, I'll can i give you a link to a copy of it below. Um, it's my roadmap money monthly budget template and it's got a lot of this stuff already built into it but you can also track your spending here as well. So you've got your income section, your bills, all of your planned expenses and one thing I like to do is put the due dates of each bill next to them to help you track them better. And then you've got your daily spending categories and then of course your savings buckets. But you also got this actual tab here. And what the actual will do is if you go into this transactions section, you can record transactions as they happen and then they will flow over to this budget. So you budgeted 2,500, your paycheck came in 2,500, there's no difference there, right? But then you can start to see as you spend money, let's say your electric bill came in $160 instead. So we're gonna go here and say on 12-1, your electric bill came in for 160 bucks, right? So we'll put 160, go to the category electric, and you can put a note here or whatever, say it's paid. Now we go back to the monthly budget, look, you were over budget by $10. So this will tell you how you're doing if you want to track your expenses manually. All right, and that's how you create a budget template in Google Sheets. Grab a copy of that free budget template in the link below. And if you don't want to use a spreadsheet and you would rather track all of your money through a mobile app, check out these six budgeting apps that are better than mint.com that you can use starting right now.